watched the Eagles beat Dallas 21 20 in the last few seconds as a matter of fact welcome to Giant Stadium no score here as yet we're in the first quarter seven and a half minutes left it'll be third and four Giants this drive began back at about their two yard line. Backfield this time. Bavaro in motion. Hand off Megan. Fumble. He got back on it. Flag on the play. Picked up two. The penalty is going to be against the Giants for holding. It'll be an interesting decision here for the Redskins. Do you put him back 10 yards and let him have another shot at you, or do you take four? Holding. 66 offense. Penalty decline, fourth down. They'll take the fourth down situation. You know, I think Joe Gibbs has so much respect for Phil Sims. He said that he said if there's one thing we have to do is put pressure on Sims today because he's the guy that has beaten us every year. And that goes back a lot of years. Landetta's kick is a good one. Stanley. The ball. The Redskins got it back. I don't know how. Harry Williams made the hit. 45 yard punt, no return. The Redskins get the ball deep in their own territory. Nothing, nothing in the first quarter. 6.45 left to play. Watch your last punt. Here's Perry Williams. He is going to come in and make the hit. Now watch him after it gets by him right there. He stripped the ball out. And number 80, Joe Howard, right there comes in and makes a recovery. And the Redskins will have it first and 10 on their own 11. Straight ahead is Biner. Maybe two. Maybe not that much. There's a guy who's playing the run well, big number 77, Eric Dorsey. You know, they talk about a two-gap. A two-gapper has to play into the man on him, and then he's responsible for the gap on either side of him. Eric Dorsey is a perfect two-gapper. He lost about 15 pounds, down to 280, and seems to be much quicker. A lot of it went to his arms. Humphrey's back to throw it. Has some time. Doesn't come close to Gary Clark. Humphreys was saying last night that he's a heck of a lot more comfortable, especially playing the Giants, you know, three times in two weeks. Gary Clark slipped on that one. You know, we talked about how the field was dry in the pregame warm-up. Then when the teams went in before they come out for the game, the rain came. So the field got wet while the players were inside. Right now the rain has stopped and it looks a little bit less threatening. Kelvin Bryant in the backfield with Humphrey and out of the backfield. To Clark. Incomplete. Gary Reasons was the closest giant. And the defense hold. That is the guy that they have to stop. If there's been any receiver over the years that has given the Giants a lot of trouble, it's been Gary Clark. I'll guarantee you, even though the Giants use a zone defense, when it's third down, they are going to be collapsing quickly on Clark. They don't want to give him anything deep. Mochenko left-footed to make it. Midfield. Hard to knock down. He gets to the Redskin 40. Before he's stripped up by Todd Bowles. Nine yard return. 37 yard punt. Nothing, nothing. First quarter. Back at Giant Stadium. Pat Summerall with John Madden. 539 left. 
In the first quarter, no score. Jim Hannafin, former Cardinal coach. Now the Redskins offensive line coach. Working. They, they love to do that, those line coaches. You always give them one of those pens and a little board. And they'll diagram, and most of the time, they'll diagram a running play, and that's what Jim Hannafin was doing. Sends to work. Screen pass. Anderson is cut down by Wilbur Marshall. Now, Wilbur Marshall is playing better now than he has since he played for the Chicago Bears. Remember 1985? You're when so right. He was with the Bears, and they went to the Super Bowl, and then he came to the Redskins, and never really was the old Wilbur Marshall, but in the last three weeks, he is playing linebacker like the old Wilbur Marshall from all now. He looks as if he feels a lot more comfortable. Second and 13. You talk about a guy who brings an emotional load with him. That's Wilbur Marshall. Sends back to throw it again. With time. Outside Bavaro. From behind by Marty Coleman. A fine play by number 51. The Giants are getting pretty good protection for Phil Sims. They know that, that they have to give him protection. They can't let him take any hits because... You don't know how many hits that ankle can take today. So as long as he can stay like that with clean feet, no hit, then he's going to get through this game. Third and 13. Redskins have gone to sort of a new scheme in their defensive line. When they want to put pressure on the passer, they change defensive tackles, as they have now. They bring in Tim Johnson and Eric Williams. Pass to Ingram caught. Close to a first down. 14-yard pickup. That should be enough. And that is the that is the toughest thing a quarterback has to do. Third down, third and long. They got their pass rushers in there. They got their nickel defenders in there. And look at him. He just takes Ingram. Ingram runs an out pattern and beats Daryl Green. Daryl Green, their best cover guy, one-on-one. -on -one. Ingram beat him and got the first down. 14-yard pickup, first and 10 Giants at the Redskin 30. Time running out in the first quarter. Three and a half minutes. Anderson hammers for another first down inside the 20. A gain of 13. Mayhew and Green made the stop. And you're right, Otis Anderson hammered. But watch the blocking he gets for number 72, his right tackle. See him, he takes in, he boom, he hits in the man, gets him to the outside, that knocks a hole. Bob Cratch, the left guard, boom, he had good contact. They got good movement on that side. Six carries, 30 yards for Anderson. He remains the lone setback. And another carry. Down to about the 13. Man made the stop after a gain of four. This is the kind of football that Bill Parcells enjoys. I think if he could take this, you know, make a play passing when you have to, just to keep the drives alive, and then just, boom, take your big back in there behind the big offensive line and just ram it right down the defense. Second and six. Number 13, Sims rolls right to Bavaro. Bounds at the three. Monty Coleman. Gain of ten. That's the old bootleg player waggle. I think there's a penalty on the play, though. There is. Heck, I think it's against the Giants. Really good use of hands. Base number 65 offense. Ten yards. Repeat second down. That's the center, Bart Oates. He must have gotten his hands up quickly. If you look at it from here, you'll see what Sims is going to do is he's going to come out on the bootleg and then he's going to hit Bavaro on the outside. You get the back going to the left and Sims coming out. Now, sometimes those centers will just get their hands up and get a face down. Sims to Megan. Second at 16, they needed Megan almost to the five. Pickup of 18. He's tripped up by Mayhew. 
That was one of the things the Giants said yesterday. We want to get the ball to make it, not just on passing down. We're going to put him in on some running downs and let him run the ball because he is probably the best offensive player they got or the most dangerous offensive player they got. Joe Gibbs says this guy is strong. He's really hard to knock off his feet. He's not that big, 185 maybe, but he is strong. Anderson. Like it could have been a face mask. That's what Sim said. But no flag. Two-yard gain. Looked like Eric Williams, number 75 for the Redskins, hit him somehow and knocked him sideways. I mean, he was going in there. O.J. Anderson was going straight into the line. And the next thing I knew, he was sideways. Watch him here. He's going in. Shoulders are up. Square is getting down. Now watch him. Doink. He just goes sideways. And it was Eric Williams. He had him by the pads, not by the face mask. Anderson again. Man and Tim Johnson stop him at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Carl Banks, the injured giant linebacker. Out with that infected bad wrist. That's going to be, it would appear, the end of the first quarter. And that is the end of the first quarter with the score Washington nothing, the Giants nothing. Remember when Alan Shepard went to the moon, Pat, and he hit a golf ball? I think that's his divot right there. I think we just found it. Either that or the ball just came down. That'd be fun. That'd be something. I'd like to go up and kick a football on the moon. Third and goal on the four. Ingram on the move. Sims to throw it. Sims on to Baker. Flag on the play. Penalty markers everywhere. Two flags. Well, that's on Brian Davis. That was stupid because Stephen Baker had already scored the touchdown. He was at the back of the end zone, and Davis hits him. That was a stupid penalty. That was one out of frustration. But Stephen Baker is going to come on a post there. Sims is looking for him all the way. He has become his favorite receiver. Look, out of frustration, Davis is beaten by Baker, and then out of frustration, he just pushes him. Number 34, defense, totally decline, touchdown. Lawrence Taylor doesn't agree necessarily with this set of circumstances. I think he probably thinks it should go on the kick. And I think he just said it will. Gordon McCarter. There were two penalties, two flags on that play. Matt Barr for the extra point. is good and it's seven nothing just beginning quarter number two seven nothing Giants here's Stephen Baker right here here's Brian Davis he's just going to run a post and beat him in there and then Davis hits him again after he catches it watch the motion goes away now he has that boom. He hits that thing. Great pass by Phil Sims getting it in there. Now the play's over. Davis hits him. So now that penalty will go on this kickoff. So the Giants will be kicking off from the 50-yard line with a holder. Mitchell and Stanley back deep for the Redskins. I think he did this on purpose. Inside the 10. And it worked. The short kick, an eight-yard return. The Giants special teams down in good shape. Bobby Abrams down first. Stan Humphreys back for the Redskins, who are still with minus yards, minus one. I tell you, you know, part of that is is 
their ability. The other part is the way this giant defense is getting after him today. Monk in motion on first down. Hand off to Piner. Stuck at the line of scrimmage. Washington was the first giant to hit him. Again, let's send you back to the New York studios and here Craig Gumbel. All right, Pat, for those who missed it earlier today, the Eagles beat Dallas, and here's how. Under the one-minute mark, Randall Cunningham from 10 yards out to a leaping Calvin Williams, and the point after was the difference. The Eagles 21 and the Cowboys 20. Pat? 7-0 Giants, 14-18 left second quarter. Humphreys on a reverse to Monk. Flag on the play. There is nothing doing. Taylor made a good play. Diossi made a good play. No game. And Mark Collins made a good play. You know, the Giants play that too deep zone. So the corners, you see here 25 Collins, the corners Off have to time. get up on these outside plays and help. You see Collins come up to the outside and make the tackle right there. The only problem with that play is the Giants lined up offside. And the guy that did it was a nose tackle, Eric Howard. You wonder how they can do that when the ball's right there and they're lined up right in front of it. Sometimes they try and go helmet to helmet. They call it paint to paint. I think Harry... Eric Howard's paint got too close to the other guy's paint. Makes it second and five. At the 21, Humphreys to Biner. Nothing. Johnny Cooks and Leonard Marshall stack it up. Johnny Cooks did a good job of getting penetration. You know, I think they think that they're going to work. He's going to come right out here and stop this side here. And that's the thing. Now, they think they're going to get the movement there. Johnny Cooks allows them no movement. And he is right in there on the play. Third and four. Elvin Bryant back in the backfield. Humphrey, pass complete. Should be enough for a first down. Pick up a six. Reasons and Collins. Now, I think that's the thing that the Redskins have to do today. Pat, is they have to get the ball to the posse. They have to get it to Art Monk, you know, and to Gary Clark and to Ricky Sanders. Since Humphreys has become the starter, they're not throwing as much to those guys. They've been running more and using other guys, but I think to get back to a good balance, they have to get the ball more to those guys. That's the Redskins' first first down. They're at their own 27. Fake to Biner. Here's Bunk. They tried to set up the option play. Collins didn't bite. Monk is knocked out of bounds by Pepper Johnson. Pepper Johnson is all over this field. Yeah, we talk about that. Mark Rippon was a quarterback, and he started the first three games. And the posse had 39 catches, and that represented 83% of the team's offense. Now, since Humphreys has been the quarterback, they've only caught 29, and the percentage has gone down over 20 points. Second and five, Redskins, their own 32. The Clark, hammered by Collins. Knocked back with pick up of five. First down, Redskins. Mark Collins didn't play in the last game against the Redskins, was just activated last week off the IR. They lost, they lost Carl Banks and picked up Mark Collins. I'll tell you, he, he brought a pretty big load with him for a little corner. Indeed, he did. Renee Thompson had been playing there. Well, Renee Thompson has a dislocated thumb and a broken shoulder, and all he can do now is play special teams. Take this to Biner. The pass is intercepted by Everson Wall. 
Lieutenant for Clark. Everson Walls, just like Bill Parcell said, in the years in football, just seems like the ball always finds him or he always finds the ball. His third this year. Yeah, here's the interception pad. It looked like Everson Walls just out hustled Gary Clark for the ball. Humphreys is trying to force it in there, but I think it became like a, a jump ball or a push ball, and Everson Walls just out hustled Clark. Sims to Megan. Maybe two. Stop by man. And Monusky. You hear the guys down there in the sideline after every play. They not only read the play and get out there and make the tackle, but then they start officiating. As you yell, face mask, he's grabbing, he's holding. Hey, it's those darn uh, turnovers that keep coming back to haunt the Redskins. Second and eight, Sims is five out of five. There's the Redskins, 45. Carthon. Carthon hammers down to about the 33. Mayhew made the stop. You know, if you look in the five games that the Giants have won, they've had plus three, plus one, plus two, and plus one. One time the turnover ratio was even. So, you know, in talking to both coaches, you know, they always have these close games. They're big division rivalries. And both coaches say, what's the key? And they say one thing, turnovers. Turnovers first, then we got to run the ball. And Sims, who's perfect so far, has now missed his first one. Carthon, the intended receiver. You know, Charles Mann was right back there on Sims, and he looked like he was awfully nice to him. Everyone knows that Phil Sims has a bad ankle. And I'll tell you, Charles Mann could have taken a shot at him. Watch 71 here. He's working on the right side of the screen. And right here, he looked like he just let up there, which is really pretty gentlemanly. I mean, there aren't a lot of defensive players in the league that will hold the quarterback up. You wouldn't call many of them gentlemanly, I don't think. <laughs> Ingram goes in motion, sends back to throw it again. Redskin tried to blitz. The interference flag is down. Pass was caught by Manuel anyway. 17-yard pickup. Lionel Manuel doesn't play much anymore, doesn't start much anymore, but the one thing he can do is what he just did there is run an in pattern. Holding, defense, coming into play, first down. And here's what an in pattern is. Lionel Manuel is up on top. You run up the field, then you run in. Now, as you run in, you see he's being held there. You don't gain ground up the field. You come a little back to the quarterback. First and 10 at the 16, Sims rolls, gets Favaro, and he'll score. again back go to the left Sims comes out to the right Bavaro fakes like he's making a block then just works out into the flat and into the end zone that's the second time they ran that play they ran it in the first quarter going the other way Andre Collins saw he had made a mistake and turned around to chase Bavaro but it was too late then 9-12 left to play in the first half and the Giants up 14-0. Pat Summerall, John Madden at Giants Stadium, where the Giants have just taken a 14-0 lead with 9-12 left to play in the first half. You want to see what a play fake does or a bootleg? Watch, he starts in here. Now watch, 
Both these safeties here, they come up so fast they fall down. Watch it, boom, they come up, they fall down there, and then Bavaro gets outside Andre Collins, who also took the bite. Bars kick off. Stanley at the seven. Still about the 26th, stopped by Durerson. A 19-yard return by Stanley. 14-0, the Giants lead. Fourteen nothing the Giants over the Redskins and again before that touchdown the interception by Walls set up the whole thing. First and ten for the Redskins at their own 26. That's Riggs who dropped the ball and now jumps on it. Two weeks ago at RFK Stadium. Stephen Baker had an 80-yard touchdown reception. He scored the first Giants touchdown today. Mark Bavaro set up one with a 61-yard reception, and he just scored the second touchdown. Maurice Carthon had the other long play, second and 14. Humphrey's back to throw it. Rushed by Taylor. Green pass intended for Riggs too high. Here's a guy that everyone has to worry about is Lawrence Taylor. They're always going to have a blocker on him, maybe two. That time Lachey pushed him into the tackle, and then the, and then he just ran right over Russ Grimm. Lachey was going to pass him off. It looked like Grimm, who was the guard, didn't know it, and it being passed off. Lawrence Taylor just ran right over Russ Grimm. Third and 14. Blitz coming after Humphreys. They got him. Greg Jackson from the outside. That's where they get you. You worry so much about Marshall. You worry so much about Taylor, then Jackson comes in motion. He's on the same side. Marshall on the outside. Taylor going to the inside, and then Jackson coming around both of them free for the sack. This guy has become a big part of this giant defense in the last month. He had two interceptions against the Redskins the first time. Moshenko's kick to Megan. Sails to the 44. Megan hit at midfield. 44 yard punt, six yard return. Govea made the stop. 14 0. The Giants lead the Redskins. The SeaWorld blimp overhead. 194 feet long, two thirds the length of a football field. And from inside. Just to float in the woods or over Giant Stadium. At midfield, the Giants will take over. Hi, guys. They have 141 total yards. The Redskins have three. Sims to make it. You know, Joe Gibbs was saying last night that. Where Megan's from is Towson State, and Towson is real close to the Redskins. And Bobby Bether, who was the general manager of the Redskins, his son went to Towson. And Joe Gibson, we got every player from Towson. I mean, every guy, the backup guy, the water boy, the, you know, the corner, the extra center. He said, and the only guy we didn't get is Dave Megan, who's one of the best players in the league. Second and seven, Sims to throw. To Baker. Mayhew on the coverage. This Stephen Baker has really gotten confidence. He has become a legitimate NFL receiver. I mean, he's a he's a guy who is a real threat now. People start worrying about him. I mean, he has that speed, but he's so little. Look, he's only 5'8". He was saying he went to a department store. 
And they said, Stephen Baker, where have I heard that name? He goes to pay the check. And is it, I play for the Giants. They go, oh, no, you don't. You're that too little. Be. You don't play pro football. Can't be. First and 10, however. Redskin 32. This is Anderson to the 30. Picked up two. Stopped by Maneski. But you know, when you're that big and you walk around, look at him, number 85 there, and you say that you're an NFL player. And he has that young look, too, you know. And he got that you know, little bounce in his eye and smile. And those arms aren't very big. Look, he got those little old skinny arms and stuff. You know, he doesn't have much down below the waist. And you, know, and you, and you walk around and you say, for, for the NFL, he has to take his NFL player's card to prove that he's a player. Here's him. Marshall on a blitz. Almost got there. As did Govea. Pass intended for Bavaro. Sailed over his head. That is the first time that Phil Sims has gone down in this game, Pat. I think the offensive line has really done a good job. This time the Redskins come with a blitz. Wilbur Marshall is the guy who finally takes them down. And that's the first time today that Phil Sims has hit the turf. Phil is 9 of 11. Two touchdowns. Jeff Hostetler, who bailed the Giants out last week against the Cardinals in the last play of the game. With the help of a kick, a 40-yard field goal by Barr. Out of the spread is Sims. That's the Lionel Manuel again. And that's the second time in a row Phil Sims has gone down. That time it was man. But here's the catch. You'll see out here, the guy's working. Boom, he got hit right there. The defender fell down. So Lionel Manuel was able to get that one. But every time Lionel Manuel runs an in pattern, watch 71 man working from the right side there. Boom, he really puts a hit on Phil Sims. He was working that time against Eric Moore. That's the weakness in the Giants offensive line is their left tackle right now. Handoff is to Carson. To about the 13 and a flag comes flying and Marshall made the stop. Three yard pickup. Did you see Bill Parcells run off the field last week Pat I was watching some highlights and I saw a blur going across my screen. 66 offense. 10 yards. Repeat first down. We thought he pulled a hamstring. Well, he did. He pulled a quad, he said, in the front. The hamstring's in the back. The quad's in the front. That's William Roberts there. He's the left guard, number 66. That looked like a pretty good block to me. I'll tell you, I would take that because he's playing against big Daryl Grant there. Roberts against Grant in the pit. I would. I thought that looked pretty good. They are back at the 28-yard line. Sims to throw again. The rollout again. He just has to throw it away this time. Intended or in the direction of Megan at least. Navarro also out there. Charles Mann is there arguing that there was no one for him to throw it to and that, that he threw it away to avoid a sack. They're lining Charles Mann up all over today. To He's their best pass rusher and normally he lines up on the left side. We saw two plays ago where he lined up over Eric Moore on the right side. 5-0-2 left. That's Richie Pettibone. Coaches the Redskins defense second. And about 20, maybe a little bit more. This Back is the 28. area where Richie Pettibone usually blitzes too. In this situation, you're down 14 to nothing. You got to go after him now. You just can't let him sit back there. You let Phil Sims sit back there. He is going to tear you apart. As Joe Gibbs said, if somebody gets open, he's not going to miss him. It seems like he always has his, his biggest games against the Redskins. I think that probably of all the teams in the NFL, the Redskins have more respect for Phil Sims than any other team. That's what they always tell us and talk about. Of course, I've always had a lot of respect for Phil Sims. I think that he's kind of underrated when you talk about the great quarterbacks. His name never seems to get mentioned, but when you think that he's been playing 12 years in this league and 
He's won a Super Bowl and the things that he's done. You've got to put Phil Simms in there as one of the great quarterbacks in the league. Second down at the 28 with five minutes, two seconds left. That was a giant timeout, by the way. So they'll have two left. We are adjusting to the 26 yard line, which is the correct spot after the penalty enforcement. Second down. Yeah, what happened is they called a 10 yard penalty, then they moved the ball back 12 yards. So then when you take 10 and then 12, then you got to add two to the third power. Now they just took off two. Here's Sam. Back into the middle of the screen pass intent intended for. Anderson, Kurt Govea, and Eric Williams were not fooled. That's one of those things that can be embarrassing for a quarterback is to is to have a big old defensive lineman get an interception. Big old Eric Williams was just wallowing around in there in the mud somewhere on the carpet. And lo and behold, they darn near threw the ball to him. Bill Belichick. He runs the giant defensive operation. Third and 20. They're at the 26. This is where they try to go to Megan on a scat. He's out of the backfield. And Sim is going to find him. And Megan fights his way inside the 10. There's a flag on the play. Sims might have been over the line of scrimmage. I think Sims was over the line of scrimmage. He looked like he started to run and remember he had a bad ankle. Then he then said, I better find Sims. And, uh, the pass was thrown from beyond the line of scrimmage. The penalty is five yards from the spot of the pass, plus loss of down. Of course, if it's behind the line of scrimmage, then it's good. Must have been over the line of scrimmage. Watch, here's the line of scrimmage right here, which would be about the 27. Now, right there, he's okay, he's okay, he's okay, he's okay, he's okay. Now he's over, because there's the line of scrimmage. He went over, but look what he saw out there. He saw Megan. He wasn't far over, though. I mean, it looked like he was farther than that, but it was only a yard. Matt Barr with Hostetler holding from 48 yards. That was Taylor in motion. Hostetler going for Lawrence. Complete. That's the one they set up. They call it Ninja. That's the old Ninja. Taylor is the wing. He is the left wing. They put him in motion. Watch him. Here's Taylor right there. He starts in motion. It's going to be like a field goal. Then he runs. He just runs it up. And they fake the field goal. Now there. Boyd Mays back there with him. Let's watch that fake again. Here's Lawrence Taylor. Boom, he's going to go in motion. Doesn't fake Mays there. Then you just take Hostetler here. He comes up. He gets hit just as he throws it. It was really a pretty good throw, but it didn't fake anyone. See the motion? Now the fake kick. Hostetler rolled, gets rushed. Pretty good throw. Was it pass interference? First and 10 at their own 30 for the Redskins. Humphreys back to throw it. Chased by Eric Howard. Chased by Dorsey. Finally gets it to Donnie Warren. Johnny Cooks made the stop after an eight-yard gain, along with Lawrence Taylor. Poor old Eric Howard. He missed him two times. You see that? That watch. Eric Howard will come in here. He's number 74. One of the better nose tackles. Watch him. Right there, he got him. Nope, nope, nope. He comes up with a bagel. Then he's going to go like this. He got him again. Nope, another air ball. <laughs> Humphreys is a pretty strong guy. He's a big guy. Eight-yard gain, second and two. First time Phil Sims saw him, and he thought he was a linebacker. That's Riggs. Out to about the 48. Jackson and Guyton made the stop. 
You know, you look back at that fake field goal, and usually on a play like that, if you don't really fake them where a guy's wide open, it doesn't work. But now, that may have been the thing that has given the Redskins some light. First and ten Redskins at the 48. With just over three minutes left in the first half. Humphreys with some time. Gets it to Riggs for not much. Steve Diossi after a gain of five with an assist for Johnny Cooks. This is what the Redskins have to do. You know, being down 14 to nothing, not think that they have to pressure anything. They got plenty of time. It's still the first half. They're going to have a halftime. The worst thing the quarterback can do, a young quarterback, is start to force things and then have more turnovers. He has second and five and puts Monk in motion. Just be patient. Outside to Donnie Warren. Picked up only two yards. Stopped by Everson Wall. Hey, we talk about Lawrence Taylor. He lines up in the right side and the left side. This time he's against Big Ed Simmons. Ed Simmons has him in the outside. Then you keep your back in there to help with him and bring your center to that side. So they say, well, Taylor really doesn't always get double teamed. No, no. Sometimes he gets triple teamed already. Two minute warning is given to both coaches. 14 nothing Giants lead. Remember, next Saturday, college football on CBS begins at 2 Eastern with college football today. Then in a big ACC matchup, it'll be Georgia Tech taking on number one ranked and undefeated Virginia as the Cavaliers try to improve their record to 8-0 this season against the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets next Saturday here on CBS. Third down and three. Humphrey's back to throw. Up out of the pocket, he'll get the first down and more. Down to about the 32. Everson Walls. You know, Stan Humphreys doesn't see everything, but he had Donnie Warren wide open. Donnie Warren is his tight end, usually a blocker. Watch 85 right in the middle of the screen, Pat. He's wide open. I mean, if Humphreys just looked here, he has a big play. I don't know why he doesn't see him. He must be looking to run. He had to be. Humphreys barely gets rid of it. Pressured by Taylor. Hey, we looked at Humphreys last night, and he has a big old knot on his head. He said he doesn't get rid of it until the season's over, and this is one of the reasons he has a knot on his head. You get hit like that, Taylor hit him with his left arm and then kicked him in the face with his left foot. And that John Buffett. John Washington was standing right there also. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's tough to be a quarterback in this league, man, because they're throwing hands and arms and legs and feet and every part at you. Straight pass to Warren. He is taken down after a small pickup by Washington. You know, it's Four. funny that Donnie Warren has only caught one pass coming into this game all year. I think he's caught three. And what happened, Stan Humphreys was telling me that Jeff Rutledge, he was a backup quarterback for the Redskins now, when he was with the, the Giants, he was the scout quarterback. Once he threw to 85, they said, no, no, don't throw to Warren. They never throw to Donnie Warren. So that's part of the game plan today. down they need seven Humphreys hit again by Taylor I'll tell you Lawrence Taylor came like he was shot out of a gun he's going against Jim Lachey what 79 Lachey he's a 300 pound tackle Taylor just gets that arm in there gets by him he takes Lachey Marshall's up the middle. Look at the pressure that they put on Humphreys. Boom, from the outside, then Leonard Marshall, 70, coming right up the inside. 
That's an old sandwich pancake job. They hadn't been rushing the passer well in the last three weeks. Low Miller from 45 yards is good for the Redskins who finally put some points on the board. It's 14-3 with 106 remaining in the first half. Next week here on CBS, San Francisco Green Bay, where John and I will be, Dallas and the Jets, New Orleans, Cincinnati, Washington and Detroit. Atlanta, Pittsburgh, Phoenix, Miami, Chicago, Tampa Bay. And it, of course, starts at 12.30 Eastern time with this group Greg and Terry and Leslie and Pat yeah it'll be interesting seeing the 49ers next week after seeing the Giants I know there's a lot of arguments who's the best team right now in the NFC I've seen the 49ers we've done their games we've seen the Giants we've seen the Bears and I would still have to say that the 49ers are the best team in in the league now that doesn't mean at the end of the season they're going to be or in the playoffs they're going to be Do you think the 49ers are where they were last year at the end? No, no, I don't think they're there yet, but I don't think anyone else is either. This giant defense could be. Here's Megan. That last series, they sure looked like they were getting there. Megan. Broke away from about six Redskins. Finally stopped by Brad Edwards after a 30-yard return. This guy's turning into one of the most exciting players in the Boy, league, is Dave Meggett. You know, if you look at him, he's not, in one way, he's not a big guy, but if you look at him in another way, he is a big guy. I mean, you look at his body, I mean, those arms, he got pretty big arms there, pretty big forearms. You see how that, that thing tightens up there? He has pretty big legs. I mean, he is a powerfully built man. Very strong upper body. Sims out of the spread. Chased by man, and he threw it away. Hey, man is arguing again that Sims threw the ball away. That's the second time that he's done that. And I don't know that man may not be right because a quarterback can throw the ball down, but he can't get rid of the ball or throw it away to avoid a sack. I think that's Charles Mann's argument I think that Sims has done it twice in this first half both times with man pursuing him. second and 10 53 seconds remain first half 14 three Giants Stacy Robinson made the catch picked up eight Walton and Coleman made the stop you're right John they're putting man everywhere that time he lined up at right defensive end to throw Stacy Robinson again first down Giants Monty Coleman the stop six yard gain 23 seconds left to play in the first half Giants timeout they have one left scoring summary Baker from Sims Giants led seven nothing Bavaro 16 yards away from Sims 14 nothing the Redskins finally 45 yard field goal by Low Miller with 106 left of the first half. That's the way it is. 14 3. The Giants have one timeout left here. I remember the last time they had a field goal opportunity, they went what they call Ninja. Ninja is a, a fake field goal pass to Lawrence Taylor. Now they would like to get about 15 or 20 more yards either on one play or two plays and then use that timeout and get a field goal opportunity. Sims to throw. If he has time. And now he'll just take it. Monty Coleman made sure he stayed down. A loss of five for Sims. Looked like something gave way. Well, I think he knows that that ankle is bad.
pad and he doesn't want to put too much pressure on it. I think that was a coverage sack. He looked and looked and looked and couldn't find anyone open. So he just went down and he didn't want to have to take a real hit on it because they can say Phil Sims is 100%, but he's not 100%. Now they use their last timeout. I think the thing that Bill Parcells is upset with there is he didn't want to take a loss. It brings up a second and 15 situation back at the 43 yard line in giant territory with 14 seconds left. Yeah, you watch Phil Sims run there and he's not running the way he did two weeks ago down at RFK. Running what they call a little gingerly. That's a good word. <laughs> It's the way a quarterback runs. On oh, second down. They make it. Hit by Wilbur Marshall. Do you hear that sound that come out of Wilbur yes. Marshall? I did. <laughs> That's something. That has to be some kind of other deal. It, he made that hit. Oh. Some new words come out. It's the same kind of football game we expected. And I'll tell you, this and Bart Oates here, that's what you expect in a rivalry. That's what you expect when you get the Redskins going against the Giants. That's the end of the first half. With the score, the Giants 14, the Redskins 3. Well, those of you who have been watching the Redskins and the Giants, you've seen a real tough effort by the Giant defense. They lead the Redskins by a score of 14-3. to And uh, Stephen Baker and Mark Bavaro on the receiving end of Phil Simms' touchdown passes. But in the pregame show, you'll recall Terry talked about what might happen on defense for the Giants. What about it, Terry? Well, we said the thing that have hurt the Giants is wide sweeps. But what the Giants would do would go to a four-man line. This is now one, two, three. And here's, here's Lawrence Taylor lined up in a stand-up defensive end. This is your middle line. Back on the other wide side, linebackers Cooks. What this does, Cooks comes from the outside, forcing support. Here's the linebacker covering. Here comes Lawrence Taylor from the outside with a spill in here. You cannot run wide sweeps. The thing that has hurt the Giants is sweeps. But with the forward man front, no one has been able to run wide against the Giants. And the Redskins have managed just 27 yards rushing today, just 46 yards of total offense as they trail the Giants at halftime. In San Francisco, the 49ers lead the Browns by two touchdowns. Touchdowns. Joe Montana has thrown a 14-yard pass to Jerry Rice for a touchdown. John Taylor not uh, dressed but not playing so far in this game. And Roger Craig did not dress for the Cleveland games. Chicago is at Phoenix, and the Bears are all over the Cardinals as they approach halftime down in Arizona. And a huge crowd on hand in Phoenix, Arizona. Look at Jim Harbaugh, though. 67 yards for Ron Morris. Little play-action pass. This man's coming off his best game ever against the Rams. Had a week off and picks up where he left off. And Ron Morris, a... Dallas young man, SMU, makes a nice grab. Neil Anderson has scored two touchdowns, both from two yards out, and the Bears rolling against the Cardinals, 28 to nothing, with a minute remaining to be played in the first half. And at San Diego, the Chargers leading Tampa Bay by a score of 24 to 7. Marion Butts has scored two touchdowns, and Chris Chandler on in relief of Vinny Testaverde for Tampa Bay this afternoon, 5 of 7, 110 yards, and one touchdown pass. The NFL Today continues here on CBS after this word from your local station. Greg Dumble, Terry Bradshaw back in New York with scores and highlights from the earlier games today. The Eagles at Texas Stadium to take on the Cowboys. The Eagles up by a point, but Isaac Holt comes on and blocks Jeff Fiegel's punt, and the Cowboys took immediate advantage with Emmett Smith taking it in from three yards out. Emmett Smith being used properly by the Cowboy. He is an eye back, and Johnson puts him in the eye, use, uses his strength. Cowboys score. They led by six, but under a minute, Randall Cunningham went to work. Well, we said in the pregame show this would be the sack bowl, but you notice there, Randall Cunningham. Cunningham 
plenty of time to throw, and Calvin Williams simply outleaps the other Williams of the Cowboys and makes the winning catch for the Eagles. Buddy Ryan, did he shake Jimmy Johnson's hand? No. Meanwhile, Minnesota at Green Bay, or against Green Bay in Milwaukee. Rich Gannon's pass deflected and intercepted at the line by Sean Patterson. One of six Viking turnovers on the day. Patterson, nine yards in the touchdown. Jerry Burns goes down again. 24-10, Packers the final score. Detroit at New Orleans. Reuben Mays on the receiving end, but watch him cough it up. And Detroit's Jimmy Williams is the right man at the right time. Picks it up, rambles up the sidelines, 53 yards. The Saints with a team record, eight turnovers today. The Saints lose to a run-and-shoot team for the third time this year, 27-10. Miami at Indianapolis. That was a bad day for Indianapolis quarterbacks. Jack Trudeau hammered and knocked out by Cliff Odom here. Joe Ferguson was ineffective. Jeff George had a rough day. Meanwhile, Dan Marino, four yards to Jim Jensen. And the Dolphins go to 6-1 and one on the season with the victory over Indianapolis. At New England, Zeke Moad back in action. And so was Jim Kelly. Jim Kelly, 20 yards to number 84, Keith McKellar. The Bills are 6-1, and one. New England 1-6. And, and the Jets at Houston... Well, Evander Holyfield, the heavyweight champ, was watching. Here's Warren Moon out of the end zone. The worst place in the world to throw the football from if you're a quarterback is standing in your own end zone. You get happy feet, you get a little uncomfortable, and you put a lot of pressure on your offensive line. There's the fumble by Moon. Jets recover. Jets win. The NFL Today continues in a moment. I'm at Giants Stadium. It's the Giants 14, the Washington Redskins 3. Pat Summerall here again with John Madden. Remember we were talking when we were down in Washington three weeks ago about the different kind of pictures the Giants present as opposed to the Eagles and uh, Stan Humphreys being a, a young quarterback does look a little confused. Well he does. I mean you know it's a it's a new offense for him playing as new having guys rushing live at him. The Giants are really putting a big rush on Stan Humphreys. I said before the game that I think he has to get the ball to the posse. In the first half, he's only completed two passes to the posse. Of course, that being Ricky Sanders, Art Monk, and Gary Clark. And, you know, that's easy for us to say up in here yeah, that sure. he has to do it. But the giant defense has something to do with that. And, of course, guys getting open and all those things have something to do with that. Of course, knowing Joe Gibbs, as we both do, the one thing he wants to do, number one, of course, as we said before, is avoid turnovers. Number two is I like to run the ball, and they haven't been able to do that either. And I'll tell you a third thing about Joe Gibbs, Pat. I think that he does as well at halftime making adjustments as anyone in football. And I would bet that the Redskins are going to get the ball now in this opening kickoff, and I'll bet this will be a good drive. I'm not saying they'll score, but he puts his best stuff back together at halftime as good as anyone. Bar's kickoff will be returned by Walter Stanley. Almost broke one earlier and almost broke another one. Renee Thompson, who is still face down, finally made the tackle. Renee Thompson has to be one of the toughest guys in the league. Eh? That he's playing here with a, a, he has a broken shoulder. He has a dislocated thumb. And he's a marked man because he's the best cover guy in the NFL. And Bill Parcells told us, I can't get him not to practice. He wants to practice every play. Yeah, obviously, I mean, you know he's not going to miss a game, but as you say, this guy won't even miss one single practice. Redskin ball at their own 46, first and 10. Giants leading 14-10. Humphreys to work. Quick up the middle of the Inside the Giants, 40. Stopped by Mark Collins. Picked up 16 yards. Yeah, that's what the Redskins do, uh, like anyone does at halftime. They go in and they and they look at the pictures. They look at the tendencies of the first half. Then they go up and say, okay, look, this is what we want to do. And they put a series of plays together. This play was called in the locker room. First and 10 at the 38. Diviner. Pass to Warren. Look what the Redskins have done in 1990 in the second half. I, I think a lot of that is a 
a tribute, obviously, to their team. But I think it's a tribute to Joe Gibbs. I you know, said just at halftime that, that this is a, is a top coaching staff, and one of the things that they do well is make halftime adjustments as well as anyone. Second down and three at the 31. down stopped by John Washington he got four so that should be enough yeah, you can see that one of their problems or one of the things they want to do is go play pass on first down that's Bill Belichick of course he's the defensive coordinator of the Giants now he has to make not the the new plays he has to make adjustments now to what the Redskins talked about in there at halftime hey, Joe Gibbs has all those notes on his notepad he got a two-sided notepad with plays. Oh, that's going to be as short, as short yard it sure is. You know, this is another area, this so-called red zone, although they're not quite there yet. That's usually 20 and inside, where they have had some problems. The Redskins have had problems. They, you know, they one, they've had problems, and two, I think they're psyched out about the Giants. I know Joe Gibbs says that he thinks they're the best inside the 20 defense ever in football. Humphreys gets the first down. Jerry Dorsey made the stop. He got just one. When you see the nose tackle, number 74, back like that, you know it's a first down. Watch 74. And when he's first the guy down. in the middle and he gets driven back that way, you don't have to be any kind of an official that's going to mark it with your foot. You just give him the first down. They took him out of the picture. <laughs> they straightened him up and took him backwards. First down at the Giant 28. Fake reverse to Monk. Out to Warren. Warren steps over a Giant. Mark Collins and gets a first down. Johnny Cooks, that looks like the same play the Giants were in. Well, I know, and, and Donnie Warren being the receiver, I think, is a big story. That was what, talking to Stan Humphreys, he said that, you know, they have never used Warren. Warren is more like a, a tackle than he is a tight end. They list him as a tight end. He's usually used as a blocker. I tell the story about how Jeff Rutledge earlier threw to him once in practice when he was with the Giants. The Giant coaches said, don't ever throw to number 85. They never throw to him. He's caught five today. That's Biner. And not much doing for him. John Washington and Johnny Cooks. They give Biner two. Now, this is a drive that, you know, we were talking about that the Redskins would come up with. Now the thing is, can they get the ball in the end zone? That's where they haven't had the success. Second and eight at the 15. You look against the Giants, they've been down there 13 times, the, the other team, and they've only allowed five touchdowns. They have Monk and Clark to the left. And now Monk goes the other way. Humphreys back to throw it. To Warren. To about the six and eight yard gain, Cooks and Reasons on the stop. You That's know, Humphreys told me in the Cooks. in the lobby when I saw him, he said, he said, let me just give you a hint. He said Donnie Warren's going to be a big a big receiver. I said a receiver. He's a blocker. You mean? He goes, no, no. He said he's going to catch more passes against the Giants than he's caught all year. And you can tell when the quarterback tells you that, you know it's going to happen because he's the guy that's looking for him. And that's his career high now, six catches. And I think, you know, part of that could be Jeff Rutledge, again, the backup quarterback for the Redskins now, who came over from the Giants. That could be one way that he could have helped the Redskins by telling them they don't pay any attention to Donnie Warren. Third and about a foot. running back. And Viner gets the carry. 
near a first down taken down by Eric Howard. He was the first one there. It's close. I think they only needed they needed less than a yard. That has to be a first down. I think the momentum of this game changed from the Giants to the Redskins when the Giants missed that ninja that fake field goal. If this isn't a first down, the Redskins got a bad mark. This has to be a first down. Well, it's not. They got a bad mark. Now what does Joe Gibbs do? Here comes Gerald Riggs. Some very animated signals from the sideline. Looks like a little confusion on the sideline. This is a formation that the Redskins call heavy jumbo. There's Phil Sims. He hasn't had the ball yet in the second half. Fourth and inches. Riggs and Viner. The give is to Riggs and he got it. You know, Gerald Riggs has that ability and short yardage of getting underneath. Now watch him as he goes in here. Instead of going up straight, he gets down low and he gets underneath all the guys that are trying to jump. Some short yardage runners jump and go up in the air to go over. Gerald Riggs goes underneath everything. Miner is the H-back. Riggs is the deep back. Humphreys on a roll. Away from one. Away from another touchdown. Ron Middleton got the block on Johnny Cooks. There's the guy, number 86, Ron Middleton. He could have been the receiver. He was watching Humphreys. And when he saw Humphreys decide to run, he just turned down and knocked down a giant, and that let Humphreys get in the end zone. Miller for the extra point, and he's good. Very, very strong-looking drive by the Redskins, and they narrow things to 14 to 10. Here's the fake. You see, he was trying to get the ball to Donnie Warren on a bootleg. They finally covered Warren, so Stan Humphreys goes the other way. And look what he finds out here. Here's Middleton right here, but he's covered by Johnny Cook, so he can either throw it to him or run. So Middleton turns into a blocker for him. Line drive kick off to Megan. He is wrapped up at about the 22 by Sidney Johnson. 14-10. The Giants lead here. Reminder, next Saturday, college football on CBS begins at 2 o'clock Eastern time with college football today. And in a big ACC matchup, it'll be Georgia Tech and Virginia. Virginia ranked number one, unbeaten. First and ten Giants at their own 23. Anderson. Hit by Alvin Walton and Todd Bowles. Yeah, it seems like every time these two teams play, Pat, no matter what happens in the beginning of the game, you know it's always going to come down to a big play or not in the fourth quarter anyway. The last five games, all won by the Giants, have been very close. There's always a big play by the Giants and a turnover by the Redskins. Here's him. Ball batted away. Fred Stokes got the hand up. I don't know where the ball went. I don't either. I never saw it. Like he threw the ball and then the ball disappeared. Sims grabbed his face mask. This is something. He's getting a pretty big push in there. The ball just was hit by Stokes, and then it went. It just went right down into the ground. 
third down and seven at the 26. Make it third and six. They show blitz and here they come. And yeah. Sims had to get rid of it. Al Boyd Mays sneaked up on the line of scrimmage and put the heat on Sims. Pass was intended for Megan. You know, in the last game when they played at Washington, the Redskins didn't blitz the Giants once. Landetta back to kick, standing at the 10. That's Walter Stanley. They got two guys out there, Renee Thompson. They're going to try like heck not to let him get down there. Landetta's kick is good. But hanging. Flag on the play. And it was against Renee Thompson, I'm sure. Or called when they hit him in the back. And this game has not only played well on offense and defense, but also special teams. Let's watch number 21, Renee Thompson. Well, you know, you know, see there's two guys lined up on him. They're always going to start that way. Here it comes right here. Right there, pushed from behind. He's hard to block legally. But the Redskins will take it over. 14 10 Giants. Back at Giant Stadium, Pat Summerall with John Madden. 8 20 left in the third quarter. First and 10 at their own 26. 14 10 the score. Here come the Giants showing blitz. Perry Williams. They had the right play call. Gerald Riggs, the ball carrier. You know, the interesting thing, Pat, it was first down, and and the Giants are using five defensive backs. Perry Williams started out here. He came into here, and here he blitzes. So he comes in here in a blitz, but they started using three linemen, three linebackers, and this series five defensive backs three down linemen Williams again up on the corner here comes Taylor after Humphreys they get it out to Warren Donnie Warren gets the red skin first down stopped by reason they were talking about Bill Belichick and the adjustments that he had to make the adjustments that he made was to go five defensive backs on first down. Of course, what adjustment do you have for Donnie Warren? I mean, who would have thought that Donnie Warren would ever catch a pass? Well, both coaches said, you know, we have to, we see each other so many times. We have to do something different, something they aren't used to seeing. Well, who would think at this point that Don Warren would have seven and the posse would have two? Humphreys gets the ball to Jimmy Johnson this time. Another tight end, the receiving tight end. Jackson and Guyton on the stop. Humphreys to Johnson. You know, it was funny since that, you know, we talked about how the momentum changed from the Giants to the Redskins. And I go back to that point of the Giants not getting that fake field goal as being the point where it really changed. It really turned things around. Humphrey's back to throw. He has some time. He dropped it out to Warren. And Warren for five yards. Here's what you were talking about. Look at that. The total offense before the fake field goal, the Redskins only had three yards. The Giants had 180. Now, after the fake field goal, the Redskins have had 124 yards of offense, and the Giants Second only 12. Second and five. Things have, indeed, really turned around. Johnson, the tight end, split wide to the right. Warren on the move. It's to Riggs. 
taken down from behind by Pepper Johnson. Got a yard. By Johnson. I think 5 15 left third quarter. I was just going to say, I think Stan Humphreys feels a lot more comfortable with a running game, as all quarterbacks do, and passing to his back and tight end as compared to his wide receiver. Underneath the zone. I don't know how comfortable he is in third down, though. Doesn't get it. Eric Howard tripped him up. He scrambled for two, but didn't get the first down. And that is a good play by the Giant defense because that put the Redskins in a situation where they're really too far for a field goal and they're going to have to punt. Watch your see, he sees that hole there. Had he been able to get up there and get the first down, they could go for it. Fourth down, and they need about two yards. Long two it is. And they only had ten guys in there. I don't believe they're going to go for it. The clock is down to eight seconds. Maybe he's going to try to pull them offside. Now they call a timeout. Yeah, I didn't believe that the Redskins in this situation down 14 to 10 on the road would go for it. Flag on the play. Gordon McCart is a referee. We see all the officials now are wearing that black armband and their left arm with number 60. That was Dick Jorgensen's number, the fine referee who passed yes, away yes, a couple yes, weeks ago. Washington had requested timeout. There is no false start. It is a charge timeout. Washington, number one. There is no timeout, Gordon McCarter says. I think what he said is they did call a timeout, but what the complaint is that the Redskins had moved before they called the timeout. The Redskins have Moshenko in the game, that's the punter. Trying to hang it up there, make a signal, fair catch. Joe Howard is the man who threw it backwards out of the end zone. John Brandis is the man who downed it at about the one. The play, Joe Howard had the ball and threw it back over his head. And the play is being reviewed. See, they ruled that it was a touchback. So now it's being reviewed. Was he in the end zone? It doesn't look like it. There he wasn't in the end zone. Now they said that the ball went into the end zone. Then they said the ball comes out to the 20. Now they're reviewing it. I don't think it was in the end zone. This looked like the same thing that happened before. Makes contact, he throws it. He doesn't touch anything. Throws it back out there. The official right there reviewed or said that it was on. I think that ball should be left where it was. On the one-yard line. We have a reversal. It is ruled that the man who downed the football did not touch the end zone. Therefore, the ball will be on the one-yard line first down. And that's where the Giants will take over. The one yard line. We're at Giants Stadium with 3.51 left in the third quarter. Pat Summerall with John Madden, and it's 14 10. The Giants over the Redskins, their second meeting of the year. The first one was 24 20 Giants. This one is 14 10 Giants. Six. 
Stopped by Fred Stokes. It's always a big thing to get it out of there because, first of all, your punter needs 15 yards. So once you get outside the five, if you have to punt, then your punter has that yardage. The second thing you worry about here is passing out of the end zone because if you have a penalty, such as holding, and you're thrown out of your own end zone, that's a touchback. I mean, that's a uh, safety, two-point safety. So now it's second and five at the six. Anderson again. Three-yard pickup. So they'll meet two for a first. Fred Stokes again on the bottom of the pile. This is a big play for both sides. Third and two at the nine. With two and a half minutes left, third quarter. and he broke a tackle and got the first down. Brad Edwards brought it down. Anderson got six yards. That is a big six yards on stats. I won't show up on anything for O.J. Anderson tomorrow in the newspapers. When you talk about a first down, the Roberts block in there helps make it. A good cutback by O.J. helps make it, but that's a big first down. In his last couple of years, O.J. Anderson's been making a lot of big plays for this giant team. He's never going to wear out, or so it seems. First and ten at the 15. And Anderson again, and again in the second effort. He gets five yards. Monusky and Williams on the stop. Yeah, you can always tell who a coach or a team has the most confidence in. You know, when you really need it, who do you give it to? And who do you run behind? And if you look at that side, you really needed it. They gave it to O.J. Anderson, and they run behind Mark Favaro. Second and five. Good block by Howard Cross to spring O.J. Carthon and Anderson behind him. Anderson again, flag on the play. Not much doing this time, but a penalty marker down. Not bowls up to make the hit to Daryl Grant. Stopped with 42 seconds left in the third quarter. They're checking the down thing there again, see? It's close to a first down. It has to be. That's what they want to look for to see if it's a first down. The will make it a first down. It's not an automatic. They had to mark off the penalty yardage before they knew it was a first down. First and 10, the Giants at the 25. They started this at the 1. Baker from wide right. Two tight end set up. Anderson. Stopped by Grant after a pickup of three. That is some drive. They started on the one yard line. I think they gave the ball to number 24 every play. And on that drive alone, he earned his paycheck for this week. That's the end of the third quarter. With the score, the Giants 14, the Redskins 10.
Our coverage will continue after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. We begin the fourth quarter. And here's the drive that's underway right now. Five plays, 27 yards, all rushing yards by Otis Anderson. He carries again to the 30. Picked up perhaps three. Wilbur Marshall made the stop. And O.J. gets a rest. Well, a well-deserved rest because even if the Giants don't pick up the first down by taking time off the clock and gaining 30 yards of field position, he did his job. Third and five, call it. At the 30, the Giants, one of two unbeaten teams in the NFL. Sims out of the spread. Bavaro. He's at the 46 and out of bounds by Bowles. A pickup of 16. Bavaro lines up as a slot guy. You see him as a stand-up position. Bowles working on him. Bavaro just running an out pattern, knowing where the first down marker is. As O.J. Anderson did the running, then Phil Sims and Mark Bavaro. They kind of put the, uh, the dot on that eye. 14-10 the score. That's Sims' first completion of the second half. That's Anderson, steps away from one tackler. Stopped by Marty Coleman. Darrell Grant had the first shot at him. Watch Bard Oates, number 65. He's going to fire out. Gets his head down, and he misses Minuski. So then he's right there, boom, to make the play. If you don't get the nose tackle blocked in a three-man line, you can't run inside. If you don't get the middle linebacker blocked in a four-man line, you can't run inside. Second and 11. Rodney Hampton is the lone setback. Ball has it go through his hand. They were blitzing Sims. Kurt Govea was covering Bavaro. Oh, will be Bavaro be upset on that one. When you get linebacker coverage and your quarterback sees you and gets the ball to you and, and you drop it, that really upsets you because, first of all, you ought to beat the guy. Then you think after you catch the ball, you ought to be able to outrun him. Third and 11. Giants at their own 45. Rodney Hampton is out. And Megan is in. Be interesting to see how much urgency the Redskins have. If they have urgency, they will blitz here. Whoa! Sims gets it to Megan. He's out of bounds, about a foot short of the first down, it looks like. This is going to be close. You know, Megan has this thing that he's called scat. Now watch it. He's tapping his head there. He said he's going to go to the left. Now he can go through the line and go anywhere he wants to. I think when he tapped his helmet on the left side, that meant to Sims, I'm going out left. Sims was looking third down all the way for David Megan. They're going to bring out the chains again. This is close. See, he's watching make it all the way. See him watch, 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 and then he just puts it right in there. If it's not a first down, you're ahead 14 to 10. You're Bill Parcells. What do you do? Over the years, he's been a coach who has gone for it. This year, he's six for nine. Last week, he didn't get one. He tried a quarterback sneak. He said yesterday that was a stupid play. They're going for it. I bet this time the quarterback, I know the quarterback won't carry it because that's Phil Sims. Maurice Carthon will be the blocker. And I would bet anything that he gives it to O.J. Anderson. He went over for a visit while they were getting the chain set up again with Parcells to make sure he knows what he wants. Well, you know they're going to gang up on O.J. Anderson because 
One, he's the only back in the backfield, and Phil Sims, the quarterback, can't run. Anderson. I don't know. Alvin Walton up in a hurry. I don't think so. He didn't make it. I would have left Carthon in the backfield and let him be the lead block. I never like to send the guy. See straight in there with no lead block. You always like to send someone with a lead block. He was hit by Charles Mann and turned backward. He didn't gain an inch on that play. Mann and Walton. Watch when he runs into 71. He's in a pinch move. There he is. 71 man got the penetration. And the Redskins take over at their own 44. Maybe the fake field goal wasn't the big momentum thing. Maybe this will turn out to be the big changer. Here comes the counterplay. Flags down everywhere. Pass intended for Biner as they fake the counter. But a flag on the play. Wilson on the defense, five yards, still first down. Well, the Giants had some trouble. Remember, they were using five defensive backs on first down. That time, I think they had five defensive backs, four linebackers, and three linemen. And that's too many. Bill Parcells is thinking, boy, we've fallen apart here. 12-24 left to play. First and five, almost at midfield for Washington. 14-10 to score, Giants lead. That's the finer. He tries to get to the outside. Right now for an NFL update, let's send you again back to New York and to Greg Gumbel. All right, Pat, at Phoenix, you saw the score. Johnny Johnson, 21-yard scamper around the right side, gets into the end zone. What was once a 28-point Chicago lead is now down to 28-14 in the third. Back to Pat and John. Back at Giants Stadium, the place is raucous. Giants 14, Redskins 10, second and one. Hand off Biner. Biner with room. Biner to the 35. Jackson, a gain of 11 by Ernest Biner. You know who made a good block on that one is Ed Simmons, a right tackle, who is really coming into his own as a run blocker. He's always been a good pass protector, but watch 76 right there. Boom, he gets Taylor out of the way. Now he stays with him. See him run him by him? Now he's going to go get Taylor one more time yet, right at the end there. But he shielded Taylor out of there. First and 10 Redskins at the 35. Humphrey back to throw it. Go, go, go. Thank you. It out to Jimmy Johnson to about the 30. Come on, Jimmy. Picked up four. Mark Collins knocked him down. Hey, I thought the intensity level in the first quarter of this game was as high as I've seen all season. But right now, in this quarter, it's even higher. And six. Second down and six. Now, this is just what it's all about. Oh, yeah. And if you could bottle this and carry it around with you every week, this would be the greatest game in the world. Second down. They fake the reverse. Humphreys gets it out to Warren. He's tripped up short of the first down by Everson Wall. Well, Donnie Warren knew he was going to catch the passes today. You see him, he has a lot, he has a lot more smiles on his face today. He's usually in there blocking all day. Here's the waggle. Boom, he hits it out there to Warren. The tight ends have caught 11 passes today, Pat, and the posse, the three of them, have only caught two passes. Third and two. be hard to hear for anybody. Humphreys back to throw. Caught by Ricky Sanders at about the 12. Humphreys hit hard by Pepper Johnson just as he let it go. 
I'll tell you, he got up a little wobbly, too, but that was a big third down play. That's only the third catch for the posse. That was a big catch, though. But boy, did Stan Humphreys pay for it. Watch Pepper, Pepper Johnson here. It's going to be a rollout. He's looking, he's looking. He sees Sanders right there, and look at the hit by Pepper Johnson just as he threw it. First and 10 at the 16-yard line of the Giants. Rick is the ball carrier this time. He's at about, about the 12. Again, stopped by Pepper Johnson and Mark Collins. Got four. Well, they ran that counter tray, and then he spun to the back. Watch, he's going to counter to the right, run to the left. There's not going to be anything there, so he's going to spin. He put a spinner on Lawrence Taylor, then went back from the original way he started. Second and six, Redskin. Eight, 20 left to play. Humphreys to Monk to about the three. Guyton and Jackson took him down, but they got 10 yards. And you know, it was a matter of time where he had to get these guys in the game. Been working his tight ends, working his tight ends. Then on this drive, he's hit two big plays to his wide receivers. The first one to Ricky Sanders, and that one to Art Monk. I'll tell you one thing, it's hard to stay with a guy like Monk when he has that much time. Stan Humphreys is 11 for 11 this half. Whatever he did at halftime was right. Briggs a deep back. About the two, try to cut it back inside. Pepper Johnson again made the stop, no gain. Stadium is about in shock. They went through it last week. Remember, with the Cardinals, the stadium went in shock, and the Giants had to come from behind. And now they're starting to think: Can the Redskins break the snake bitten streak? Second and goal at the three. Riggs is the deep back. The fake is to Riggs. Humphrey's no place to go. Pass is picked off in the end zone. Bounced off of Miner. Jackson came up with the deflection. What a big play by Greg Jackson. Remember last week, or last time they played in Washington, he got two interceptions. You can't hear anything. To summarize, the posse has only three receptions for 23 yards. Humphreys, 18 out of 25, 136, two interceptions. Sims, 15 out of 23, two touchdowns. Tight end Donnie Warren, that's correct, has nine catches for the Redskins. You can't blame Humphreys for that last interception. That was right in Ernest Viner's hands. And stopped by Eric Williams, but he got five more. Let's watch the interception again. Pat Stan Humphreys does everything he has to. Good play fake. He's looking, looking, looking. Watch 21 there. Biner is wide open. The ball just goes right through his hands, hits his shoulder pads, and there's Greg Jackson. You can't blame the quarterback for that interception. It looked like the Giants have intercepted him, but Biner was wide open in the end zone and just dropped that one. Second and five. Anderson once more. Stacked up after a couple. Maybe three. Darrell, Grant, and Fred Stokes on the bottom of the defensive stack. I tell you, this is a third down. I'll bet you it'll probably be a passing play because it's a little longer. Usually we consider short yardage to be third and two or less. And if the Giants don't make it, if they come up with fourth down, I would bet they don't go for it again the rest of this game. Anderson has 21 carries for 73 yards, and he, again, is the lone setback. Sims going to work. Broken up. And no flag. Martin Mayhew pass it 
intended for Baker, and the Giants will have to punt. 5-24 left to play. Good defense by Mayhew. They tried to just throw a little quick out there to Stephen Baker, and Mark Mayhew, who you would think would play a little soft on third down, was playing Baker tight. Stanley back deep for Washington. Landetta to kick it. Chases Stanley back to the 19. And look who's there. Renee Thompson. Ends at their own 19. 5-13 left to play. Humphrey's back to throw the blitz from the outside. Incomplete. Perry Williams. Here's Look, the previous punt. This is what they do to Renee Thompson. You know that you're a marked man, and he is the best cover guy in football. They put two on him. He just runs right by him. They grab him. They do everything, and he gets down and still makes this big tackle. And I'll tell you another guy that probably doesn't get enough credit is punter Sean Landetta. I mean, that goes with the defense and a punting game like this guy is punting remarkably. Second down. They still need 10. He has some time. Viner out of bounds. Picked up five. That'll bring up third and five. Well, that's been the adjustment. You know, Humphrey started out 11 for 11 in this second half. The adjustment of the giant defense has been to go five defensive backs. They put Terry Williams in there who's been the starting corner along with their regular four. Third and five. Here comes the blitz again. This time they pick it up, but the pass is picked off by Everson Wall. Touchdown. point attempt by Barr. Good. And it's 20 to 10. Three turnovers. Those deadly turnovers. Here's the receiver. Here's the defender. And watch what happens. He goes in motion. It's going to be an option cut. If he's playing inside, he's going to go to his outside. You see right here, he's inside. Now he's going to go outside. Humphrey throws it outside. Everson Walls jumps in front of it and comes up with a big, big interception. Barr's kickoff will be taken by Brian Mitchell this time. And he is hit down by Diossi. There is a football hit. That is contact. That's tackle football. Remember, next Sunday it begins at 12.30 Eastern Time with the NFL today. Then in regional coverage, many of you will see the defending world champion San Francisco 49ers take on Green Bay. Some of you will see Dallas and the New York Jets in an interconference matchup. New Orleans at Cincinnati. Redskins at Detroit or Atlanta at Pittsburgh. New quarterback, Jeff Rutledge, for the Redskins. Back to throw it. Screen pass to Viner. Viner by Collins. And Howard. Game seven. 
You know, it's interesting that Rutledge is in there. You wonder, remember on that last play, Humphreys was in on the interception. Humphreys was, was knocked down. He looked a little wobbly coming off, and I think that's why Rutledge is in here. Second and three and a flag. Piner again. That would be enough for a first down. Durison on a stop. Of course, if there's anyone that knows this giant defense, it has to be Jeff Rutledge. I think Stan Humphreys had a good day. You know, he that one finer dropped on him, I think took all the wind out of his sail. And that wasn't his fault. That last one was. Illegal formation offense. Really? Jeff Rutledge, when he was with the Giants, he spent all his time working against the Giant defense for the scout team. Make it second and eight. This was illegal formation against the Redskins. Make it second and eight at the 27. Humphreys still sitting on the sideline. The way they put that jacket over him, I don't think he's going to come back. I don't. Just under four minutes left. 20 to 10. 21 to 10. The Giants lead it. To Donnie Warren. Warren. Now let's take a look at that shot again. Watch Gary Reasons. He's number 55, and he's the guy that hit Humphreys and takes him to the ground there. That was Rutledge the quickly. They got a first down that time. Rutledge they won 10. Harry Williams and Dave Durison up to stop him. Second and one at the 46. First down, Redskins midfield. Durison on the stop again, a gain of five. The Redskins going, of course, here with no huddle because there's three minutes left. They have two of their timeouts left, but they need two scores. Flag on the play. Pepper Johnson got to Rutledge. What a penalty marker on the play. A loss of five. Holding number 79 offense. Penalty before second down. You know you can win a game a lot of ways, and I think a couple of things that you don't always think about, but one has to be the running that O.J. Anderson did coming off the goal line. The other one has to be that punt of Sean Landetta, the coverage of Rene Thompson, and of course the pressure they're putting on Rutledge here now. Second down and 14. Pass deflected by Durison. Intended for Ricky Sander. I think everyone talks about Lawrence Taylor and how he's playing and is he the same guy after 10 years and all that stuff. I think he probably is until the fourth quarter. This is when it's the toughest. It's, it's, you can still do it, but you can't do it for as long as you used to do it. You see the respect that the teams have, the number of blockers, that all remains the same, but... The question is, where are you in the fourth quarter? Third and 15 at the 45. He put Sanders in motion. Rutledge semi rollout. Knocked away by Collins. Tended for Monk. That'll bring up a fourth down. With 238 left to play. You know, in all the acquisitions in the offseason, Maybe the best one was the Giants picking up Everson Wall. And I thought at the time, anytime you can get a corner like that and this plan B thing, it's a pretty good pickup. But he has been invaluable to this defense. And of course, he's had a couple turn a couple interceptions today. Fourth and 15. Complete. All 
almost picked off by Walls again. You know, the guy just has a knack for being where the ball is and a knack for catching it. And now the Giants know they have won this game. Two and a half minutes left to play. And you talk about a big one in a lead when you beat your closest competitor in your division twice already. What a position that is. celebrate Pat they just bump heads against each other Anderson surges for about four coming up tonight on CBS for almost two years Salman Rushdie has been in hiding from Muslims who have vowed to kill him tonight Mike Wallace talks him out of hiding and on to 60 minutes followed by murder she wrote and then the CBS Sunday movie the secret life of Archie's wife. Time out, Redskins. They have one left. They were talking about what this means to the Giants, but look at this. They have a three-game lead over the Redskins, but because they beat them twice, that would even be more because the first one is head-to-head. -head. So I think the Redskins from now on have to look. They're still a playoff team. And I think they have to start looking as a wild card and being the best of the wild card as the other guys can start celebrating. Almost as important as that 7-0 record is the fact that they're 6-0, the Giants are, within the division. I think the other thing is out of the last six games, they would have beaten the Redskins every time, and they're their closest rivals. Anderson inside the 40, stopped by Eric Williams. Timeout call. Redskins, and that's all. And that guy there earned his paycheck today because, again, it won't come out in the stats, but when they were pinned down there in the one-yard line, and he had to bring that goal ball off that goal, goal line, and he did it. He earned his paycheck. 23 carries, 80 yards for O.J. But that's what the Giants have. I mean, they just don't have one guy that they rely on. They, they spread it out, and everyone comes through for them, and they're always going to have strong defense and always be in there. And they're off to their best start in the history of the franchise. I like O.J. Anderson, you know, kind of the guy that, you know, they would give it up. I remember training camp and saying, are they going to cut this guy? Yeah. You know, does he have another year? For the last two years, they've been saying that. And I think having this guy here helps them, too. I mean, he gives them some speed and some light. Anderson again. Down inside the 30 to about the 27. Todd Bowles, 12 yards for Anderson. Wonder when Anderson's going to start looking at the sideline longingly and say, hey, that's enough. I've done mine. I've done the tough work. Let one of these other guys take the easy work. Two minutes to go. The Giants 21, the Redskins 10. minutes remaining the Redskins out of timeouts the Giants leading 21 to 10 Pat Summerall with John Madden the intensity level today has been as high as you'll see it no matter what the situation It'd be nice if every game could be played that like that but when you have 16 games a regular season is not going to happen this was as close to intensity of a championship game as I've ever seen. I think as you look at the sideline, those faces are going to be as close to championship wins and losses as we've seen. Bill Sims, 15 out of 24, 145 yards, two touchdowns, and a reminder, when this is over, stick around for the post-game show, and we'll fill you in on what took place today in the NFL. Scores and highlights.
You know, the one that impressed me is O.J. Anderson has 94 yards against a tough Washington defense, and some of those things when they had to, to be won. That's a highlight of today, and there were many. The coordinating producer of the NFL on CBS is Charles Milton III. This game produced by Bob Stinner, directed by Sandy Grossman. The NFL Today produced by Eric Mann, directed by Duke Strzok. The senior producer is David Winter, and the executive producer of the NFL on CBS is Ted Shaker. Yeah, I look at Otis Anderson there, Pat, and he has that stuff. I think he's growing hair. <laughs> I think he's getting younger. His legs are getting young. I think he's getting more hair, too. He hopes. I think that goes with winning. And you're undefeated. You have stuff like that happens to you. Frustrating day for that man. And he does a heck of a job coaching. I mean, this, this Redskin team won't win the division, but they're going to be in the playoffs. The Giants improved to 7-0. The Giants improved to arguably the best team in the league. Coming up next, the NFL Today postgame show. Greg Cumble and Terry Bradshaw will have all the scores and the highlights. Once again, the final score here at Giants Stadium was the Giants 21, the Redskins 10. You've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. Welcome back to our studios in New York, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Terry Bradshaw. Not a bad football game out at the Meadowlands. We'll talk more about that in a moment. A reminder for you, coming up next, except on the West Coast and Mountain Time Zone, stay tuned for the CBS News Magazine 60 Minutes. For almost two years, Salman Rushdie has been in hiding from Muslims who have vowed to kill him. Tonight, Mike Wallace talks him out of hiding and on to 60 Minutes. And then, it's Murder, She Wrote, followed by the CBS Sunday movie, The Secret Life, of Archie's Wife, starring Michael Tucker and Jill Eikenberry. And of course, next Sunday, we'll be back here again at 12.30 Eastern Time with another edition of the NFL Today. Many of you will see the San Francisco 49ers against the Green Bay Packers. Others will watch the Cowboys visit the New York Jets, plus a whole slate of regional action, including a late start down in Tampa, where the Bears visit the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in an NFC Central Division matchup. But uh, certainly a big story today is the New York Giants going to 7-0 and with their 21-10 victory over the Washington Redskins. Standing by at the Meadowlands are Pat and John with one of the heroes of today's game. Pat and John, take it away. It seems like every week you're one of the heroes. Congratulations again, OJ. Terrific day. I guess you're not hearing me. You know, I think one of the biggest things, OJ, was when you guys were down there backed up on your on your goal line and you had to come out and you carried the ball six or seven straight times. I think that was a big part of winning this game. Well, what we needed was some momentum. We figured that... Uh, Washington had momentum going, and we needed something. We had just got an interception. So we just we just said we're just going to come out and do what we do best, which is hammer time and just run our basic plays. Well, I'll tell you, you, you sure must feel good because you sure look like you're running as well as you ever have. Well, I do. I tell you what, the young guys really give me inspiration. The offensive line are really blocking well for me, and uh, we're just getting good play selection, and we do what we do uh, best, which is basic plays, and just let me pick my hole. Well, I'll tell you, you've done a great job at it. You're you're undefeated. I know you want to go in there with your teammates. Thanks a lot, and congratulations. Bye-bye. Now back to Greg Gumbel in New York. John, thank you very much. Certainly Otis Anderson and company doing a whale of a job. The Giants go 7-0. and oh. We'll review the scores and bring you some highlights as well as the NFL Today continues in just a moment. Welcome back. As promised, here come scores and highlights for you. Beginning with the game at Texas Stadium this afternoon where the Philadelphia Eagles edged the Cowboys by a score of 21 to 20. It was a 14-13 Philadelphia lead. Watch Isaac Holt come on and block Jeff Fiegel's punt. And that put the Cowboys in great position down low. 
Emmett Smith got the call at the three-yard line. Out of uh, Florida, Emmett Smith was an eye back. That's where he does his damage. Johnson recognizes that, puts him in the eye at the goal line. Over the left guard and tackle, touchdown. 20 to 14 lead for Dallas, but here comes Randall Cunningham under a minute. Well, we said this was the sack bowl, but Cunningham with plenty of time to throw, lays this ball up, and Calvin Williams outleaps Robert Williams. Touchdown, Eagles win it. Big game, may have saved Buddy's job. And did Buddy Ryan shake hands with Jimmy Johnson after the game? No, he did not. The Eagles go to three and four. Minnesota played Green Bay in Milwaukee, and it was the Packers handing the Vikings their fifth straight loss. The final score was 24 to 10. Rich Gannon with one of six Viking turnovers on this pass. Big Sean Patterson, number 96, picks it off and returns nine yards for the touchdown. His first NFL interception, his first touchdown, and Jerry Burns and company having problems. The Packers go to three and four. The Vikings lose another one, 24 to 10. At the Superdome in New Orleans, the Saints fall to the Detroit Lions by a score of 27 to 10. The Saints committing a team record eight turnovers today, and all of Detroit's points came off of turnovers. The Lions win at 27 to 10. At Indianapolis, Miami did a number on Indianapolis quarterbacks. Trudeau, Jeff George, all suffering injuries. Joe Ferguson, ineffective in relief. The Dolphins win it by a score of 27 to 7. Buffalo at New England. Thurman Thomas came into this game with a bruised right knee. He carried 22 times, 136 yards and a touchdown as the Bills beat the Patriots 27 to 10. And the Jets and Houston playing at the Astrodome. A couple of high-powered offenses coming in. The Jets prevail by a score of 17 to 12. The heavyweight champion of the world, Evander Holyfield looking on. And look at Warren Moon trying to throw out of his end zone. Hey, you know, the hardest place in the world for a quarterback, Greg, to throw out of is his own end zone. You stand back there, you get a little happy feet, you don't quite trust your offensive line. The fumble, the recovery, that sets up the Jets' victory. Warren Moon threw for 332 yards, but just for one touchdown, the Jets sacked him five times today. We'll take a time out and have more for you in just a moment. Welcome back, everyone. What a game being played out at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. With a minute 10 to play, the Cleveland Browns have just scored. Mike Pagel, on in relief of Bernie Kosar, has thrown four yards to Ozzie Newsom, and that is a 17-17 tie with 70 seconds to play at Candlestick Park. Meanwhile, at Phoenix, the Bears once had a 28-point lead. It's now a 10-point lead as time winds down at uh, Sun Devil Stadium in Arizona. Big crowd on hand to watch the Bears visit the Cardinals, and Jim Harbaugh steps back 67 yards to Ron Morris. Something we're seeing a lot of by young quarterbacks this year, Greg, is play-action passing. Harbaugh coming off his biggest game against the Rams, having another big day again today against the Cardinals. So is Neil Anderson with a couple of touchdown runs. This one from two yards out. There are three minutes to play in this game at Phoenix, and the Bears look like they're en route to victory. They lead it by a score of 31 to 21. And out at San Diego, uh, it is now a final score. The San Diego Chargers have beaten the Tampa Bay Bucks by a score of 41 to 10. Little thoughts on uh, what's happening in postseason? Let's take you back to the Meadowlands. Once again, Pat Summerall and John Madden. All right, Greg, the Giants beat the Redskins for the second time this year, 21 to 10 this time it was. It looks like, uh, certainly based on the way things stand right now, that San Francisco, the Bears, and the Giants would be the class of the NFC. In your opinion, once you get past those three, who look like the most legitimate playoff teams? Well, you know, I think you have to look at those three as the best teams in the NFC. I mean, these are the teams that are, that are going to be there, the Giants, the Bears, the 49ers. You can argue who's best. I mean, they, the 49ers, I think, still, someone beats them are still the best team. The Giants, I think, are probably the next best team. But then you say you have to remember that the playoff situation, that three teams are going to be in. In other words, you're going to have your three division winners in each conference. Then you're going to have teams with the three next best records being in there. And if we looked at it today, that's how it would look. So Washington loses today, in essence. And they're really behind the Giants, but they're first place wild card team. Well, it looks like uh, if you had two echelons, you'd have those three division winners we talked about, certainly in the playoffs. Then you would have a team like Washington that looks probably like the best of the rest. Yeah, and then I don't know where you would put the Bears if they're in that, in that front group or if they're in that middle group. All right, let's go back now to Greg Gumbel. 
Pat and John, thank you very much. I want to remind you, next Saturday, start your weekend sports viewing with college football today. Andrea Joyce and Mike Francesa set the stage at 2 Eastern time, and then the top-ranked Virginia Cavaliers host Georgia Tech. Then on Sunday, join us for Week 9 on the NFL today at 12.30 Eastern time. Many of you will see the 49ers and the Packers. Others will see the Cowboys meeting the New York Jets in the Meadowlands and a full slate of regional coverage. And in our late start, some of you will see the Bears and the Bucks. Once again, 60 Minutes is next, except on the West Coast and Mountain Time Zone. For Terry Bradshaw and for all of us, here at CBS Sports, I'm Greg Gumbel in New York. Have yourselves a good evening, everyone.